from Lakeport is uh, wondering, do mothers have a quantum link with children? Yes, I was about to mention that. I think that that's true, and here's why. When a mother gives birth, uh, and this is why there's a connection, I think, biologically more so than adopted mothers. When a mo mother gives birth, and, and whether it's vaginal or, hi or um, I mean, um, um, cesarean, um, either way, um, fetal cells um, transfer into the mother's blood. Yeah, they also cross the blood-brain barrier at that point. In, into the mother's blood. And for the rest of the mother's life, she will have circulating um, um, fetal cells that are... Um, progenitor cells that can differentiate into any um, cell of the body. And so the mother will have small amounts of cells in her body that might have differentiated. She may have neurons, for instance, a few neurons in her brain, perhaps, or other uh, bone marrow cells or other cells that don't have her DNA, that have her child's DNA. For the rest of her life, that's true. Now, when you understand quantum entanglement, the DNA structure itself is a very unique molecule with a, uh, with, with a, with a unique structure. It also has harmonics. I don't even want to get into harmonics, but harmonics means that everything vibrates at a certain harmony. And all the molecules are vibrating at a certain harmony. And uh, so your DNA structure has a unique harmonic and vibrates at a certain harmony too. And so this idea of a quantum entanglement based on the DNA molecules that are common between them, there is a real scientific, physiologic potential reason why that quantum entanglement's there and, and they can actually have a certain connection, yes. We no longer have to do amniocentesis to check for genetic defects. It's done with a blood test in the mother's um, blood during pregnancy. Because we can get some of the fetal blood. Correct. There you go. So there you go. It's already circulating. That's very interesting.